Um, we're facing a lot of big problems in our world. And I uh, will argue to you, I think, over the next couple minutes that NASA and space um, plays a truly sort of critical part of answering many of those challenges. And some of those challenges are challenges that you wouldn't necessarily think of or haven't necessarily traditionally thought of NASA as, as the answer. NASA can't do everything, um, but at the same time, I think the people inside NASA and some of the skills, including system level engineering um, and technology development, are relevant to some of the biggest challenges facing uh, the, 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 our species, including in particular uh, global climate change and energy. Um, I wanted to sort of uh, sketch out some top level things and then, and then we have just an amazing panel of people uh, who will I think go into more detail about um, the world of space. So what's interesting about the world of space is that um, for a long time, um, or, or I think even today, people think of the world of space just as, uh, just as, as NASA basically. The interesting thing is that that is really no, no longer the case, and to a certain extent it hasn't been the case for a while. Uh, NASA's budget is on order of about $17 billion a year. Military space budgets are probably on order of magnitude double that. Um, and what's uh, an interesting thing is, is that the commercial space sector is a very large and growing um, uh, part, of, part of the world. And I think that there are new trends that are coming out that um, will grow that uh, industry uh, tremendously over the coming years to the point that um, someday we will no longer think of space as NASA, but we will think of it as sort of a, a broader slice of humankind. Um, I want to focus on um, five key areas that I personally think NASA needs to look at as it goes into the next uh, administration. You know, we've had um, a lot of turmoil in NASA over the last um, decade, if you will, and um, a lot of that has been driven um, by the existential crisis in the human spaceflight program. And when I say that, I say that as a supporter of the human spaceflight program, someone who really believes in the future of human spaceflight and in the importance of human spaceflight for the future of humanity. Um, but uh, the uh, Columbia accident uh, sparked a review of, uh, the Columbia shuttle accident sparked a review of human spaceflight, which led to a discussion of uh, where, what should really, uh, what's the governing uh, vision uh, for, for the future of space. And, and uh, President Bush announced a, uh, a plan called the Vision for Space Exploration in which, uh, you know, a sort of a, a, g a general path forward was, was discussed. And I think we'll probably address that a little bit today. Um, in that plan, there was a sort of a general roadmap put forward uh, in which NASA would move off the space shuttle, um, retire the space shuttle, develop new vehicles, and uh, uh, begin to explore the moon and then, uh, and then uh, with an eye towards eventually going on to Mars. And that has been sort of the dominant paradigm for the agency uh, running in the background uh, since the announcement of the vision. And, and NASA has done some fairly serious plumbing uh, of, its, of its budget to um, orient itself towards that, towards that general plan. Um, there's going to be, I think, a substantial uh, re-examination of that plan in the next administration. And here are some of my thoughts on what the next president should consider as he or she, or well, he, I guess now, um, looks at uh, what uh, the future of NASA and space uh, should be. Um, the first point is uh, that NASA has to embrace its climate science role. Um, NASA is already the foremost, as you noted rightly in the last, it's already the foremost um, climate science age, in, institution in the world. But it has not recently embraced that role. Um, and when I say embraced it, I mean, you know, own it, you know, and really celebrate it as, uh, as something that um, gives it meaning and that uh, gives the people working there uh, a, r a real um, 
excitement. I, I am not saying celebrate that to the point that we cut uh, hu human spaceflight, uh, but I do think that there are, there are thematic and sort of ideological shifts that need to happen inside NASA to uh, really take on a, a leadership role um, at a senior level when it comes to climate science, and I'm sure that we'll hear more about that from the other panelists. The next thing is that it needs to embrace its role as a catalyst for commercial space. Um, and when I say that, again, I don't mean that to the exclusion of the ongoing development of human spaceflight vehicles. But NASA can play a, a critical role, a catalytic role, in helping to usher in the new generation of, of human spaceflight vehicles. And, um, and, and when I say that, I mean primarily entrepreneurial um, spaceflight vehicles. There's a, there's a revolution. Some of you, um, you know, may have heard, of course, of these, of these vehicles, the, the, the Spaceship Twos and the, uh, all these other vehicles that are now being developed by entrepreneurs. I think that these vehicles will give us all the opportunity to fly to space uh, within roughly a decade, if we so desire. And I think that it's going to be a tremendously exciting thing. I bought a, a ticket for my wife and I, and uh, we're going to go, uh, hopefully, within a couple of years. Plus, just the whole direction, it seems that they're talking about exactly the wrong direction right now, in terms of what, what they're building is really Apollo and steroids, and it's really not, it's really not terribly sustainable from a man point of view, and yet the unmanned uh, programs seem to be getting starved. You know, it, it, it's all just sort of, it's, it, it seems like the wrong perspective. I'd like, I'd like to hear the perspective of the panel. Um, well, I, I, I would actually just say that, that, that I definitely agree with that, actually. Um, I, I don't think that, that the moon base is, is a near-term thing we should be doing. I, I, I think that the resources would be better spent on, I don't know, I guess it's the old satellites versus astronauts argument. This is a sort of a fundamental question in the, in the space community, obviously, and I'll give you my, my quick take on it. I, you know, I think um, uh, one question that, you know, we, we have, we've sort of, sort of addressed, but um, is what do we really want to get out of our space program? You know, and that's a question that um, Congress hesitates to really answer honestly, um, I think. Um, that, uh, or, or maybe they're honest about it, but you know, to a large extent, um, NASA's program is driven by congressional interests. And I prefer to think of uh, NASA and space exploration in general as sort of creating a positive long-term future for humanity, which I, I truly believe that's why people get inspired about NASA is because that's the ideal that, that and so, uh, you know, I, I view that what we're doing for space is for the long-term benefit of humanity. And I believe that for all kinds of reasons, one of which we haven't really addressed today, but is, is the issue of, of um, if we're gonna have 10 billion people on the planet, um, it's not clear that our planet by itself can support 10 billion people with the resources that it has here. And we, we, we really need to go out to get space resources in order to do that. And almost, we almost are, are gonna have to have humans to, to basically engage in gathering uh, the resources of space to, for the benefit of humankind. So I think um, that people are hesitant to give the true purposes of the human spaceflight program, which is the long-term benefit of humankind um, and, uh, and the expansion of life into the universe. Um, and if, you know, and I, I believe that that's what, uh, that's what it's about. If we try to justify the moon base on sort of very short-term things, it's going to be more challenging. But I think from a long-term perspective, uh, it's one of the most important when I say this, I mean broadly, human, exp human expansion into the universe, whether it's moon, Mark, is one of the most important things that we can do now. So, um, you know, there's this, I'll just clo close, I guess, with the quote that, you know, like somebody said, I don't know who said this, that, uh, you know, a thousand years in the future, uh, the, the 20th century will be remembered for one thing, which is that we sent a, 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 a person to the moon. And I think that's true, you know, because th that's, that's sort of what, uh, what is important to the long-term future of humanity.